Hey YouTube, Troy here. I'm going to create a couple of videos or a series of videos on algae control. And just a quick little background on, on this tank. It's been up for, I don't know, right around six months. And, you know, I started out, you know, kind of like the way everyone says you need to, right? You know, you put the, you put the in the, my case, I use dry rock. You know, you put the live sand in, you put the salt water in, you start cycling your tank. Um, some kind of bacterial source. Your tank cycles, you have a diatom bloom. You know, the diatom basically consume up whatever nitrates that are present in the tank. They die off after a period of time, which happened with this particular tank. What went awry is probably about three months, maybe maybe like a month and a half to two months after it cycled. You know, I had maybe three or four fish in it. it really didn't have any corals. I mean, I really don't have any corals anywhere in there now. I got a couple little pieces, but, um, and I got cyanobacteria. So I'm like, oh, okay, great, cyanobacteria. So I started researching that, did a couple things, you know, cut back on some, you know, the feeding, uh, Increased my water changes. I was doing every other week. I just started doing weekly water changes siphoned out the cyano And eventually it you know went away basically but Then I started getting I started to get uh, you know kind of a, a brown maroon Algae that wasn't really a fuzzy algae it almost like a diatom, but I don't know if it was and uh, all over all the rocks and um, and then started getting hair algae. So I started researching a lot more about, all right, what am I gonna do? What's causing this particular problem? And that's what these videos are gonna be about. It's gonna be talking about, you know, what, what did I do? How did I diagnose it? And then once I diagnosed it, um, you know, where am I gonna go from there? So this is gonna be kind of the intro video. I'll do a few more. Um, but uh, when you think of, when you think of algae, there's about a handful of things you got to be concerned about as contributors to algae that you got to stay on top of. You know, are, is your tank overstocked? Are you overfeeding? Uh, that overfeeding can be the fish. Overfeeding can be the coral. Uh, obviously, when you put food in your tank, it's going to have phosphates. It's going to promote phosphates. It's going to promote nitrates. Um, and obviously, those are the two primary building blocks or or, or uh, elements that you know algae is going to feed off of so um so i looked at my tank i'm like all right i got six fish you know, it's not overpopulated for a 90 gallon tank i feed even though i have rasses so i feed them three times a day because their metabolism is pretty fast um you know i don't feed the tank very much um so i'm, I'm very controlled there so then you're like okay fine what's the next thing you know what's your water supply maybe your water supply is bad well I have a new roadie system, you know, I, I, I bought it when I started getting the, you know, getting into the hobby and getting this system set up, you know, it, the, the filters updated, I tested the water, it's not my roadie system. I'm using roadie water, great. Um, all right, so then what's next? Maybe the lights, you know, if you have uh, compact fluorescent, if you have uh, T5s, if you have metal halide, you know the spectrum can go bad it, you know it, it changes over the life of the bulb all right well I'm running you can't see here but I'm running two LED radion fixtures that were at the time three months old right so that's not the problem water change schedule so basically are you, are you not managing the system the way you need to you know you got to exp export or those nutrients somehow and one option or you know is, is water changes so at the time I was doing weekly water changes so and that's far more aggressive than I want to do long term you know I think the most aggressive I want to do with water changes is every other week you know do 20% every other week maybe so it wasn't that so then you have to look at your rock now I made the mistake you know I wanted dry rock I wanted Pucani rock that's what you see here it's extremely porous. I think it looks cool. Um, you know, the fact that it was dry, you can kind of, you know, place it in there and muck around with it without getting everything a big mess. 
are having to deal with, you know, hitchhiking organisms that you don't want in your tank. Um, but where I fell down was I didn't cure the rock. So if you don't cure the rock, you know, there might be, depending on your vendor, there might be organic material all over in this rock. And, and Pukani rock, if you've seen it, it's extremely porous. It's got a bunch of crevices, bunch of areas for God knows what to crawl up in there and die when they pull the rock out of the ocean. So I basically said, you know, that, that my conclusion was then, all right, my rock, I didn't cure it. My rock is either all the organics dying off, it's le leaching phosphates, and that's what's contributing to my algae problem. So I feel that I diagnosed the tank appropriately, but part of what you want to do when you fight algae is you want to figure out what your problem is. And typically how you do that is, you know, you look at every one of the, you know, the, the handful of criteria that contribute to algae or contribute to high phosphate or nitrate, and you slowly manipulate or, or, or react to one of those various items at a time to determine if that's the key contributor to where you're at. Um, so basically I deduce that, all right, my, my, my rock's bad, I need to do something about that. So that's kind of where I, where I went into doing or performing a little additional research. And, and basically, the biggest thing you need to know about phosphates is, you know, obviously that's going to be the key contributor to any kind of algae outbreak you're going to have. You need to control that, okay? There's soluble reactive phosphate. I don't want to get too geeky on you, but... And then there's organic phosphate. You, you should know the difference between the two. The, the soluble reactive phosphate is the phosphate that algae consumes. That's the phosphate that you know is is released by your food. It's it's floating in the you know it's in the water column. It can be consumed by algae. Organic phosphate, which is in in my case, what was locked in these rocks. When you see Lock, or, or rocks leaching phosphates. Basically, what they're doing is they're, you know, the the organic phosphate is being converted to soluble reactive phosphate, and then your algae can consume it. And so you just have a constant producer of phosphate unless you start have getting something to consume your organic phosphate. Okay, so an algae can't consume organic phosphate, but you got to get rid of it. So how do you do that? use bacteria so in my you know bacteria can consume both types of phosphate and bacteria will outproduce and outconsume algae so it will compete and win every time over algae so what I ended up doing is and, and if you saw my prior video you know, I, I basically stated, hey, I used uh, Dr. Tim's Waste Away, which is, you know, a bacterial, culture bacterial bacteria that will consume organic waste in your tank. So it is a bacteria that will help consume not only, you know, the organic waste that's in your sand bed or and also what's in your rock. You know, if there's some sitting in your sump, it will basically start consuming everything. Until I started using that product, I didn't see any headway in my allergy issue. You know, I've been using it for about five weeks now. Um, you know, and and I'm not affiliated at all with you know Dr. Tim, but you know if I see, if I use a product and it works for me, obviously I'm going to tell you guys about it in case you come across the same problem that I had. So since I've used it, you know the the whatever you want to call it, the burgundy-ish uh, algae that just kind of coated all of my rock is starting to die off. It's largely died off. And the hair algae is starting to diminish as well. So it basically tells me that, all right, I'm starting to, basically the, the bacteria is starting to consume the organic phosphates and so the organic phosphates don't have an opportunity to convert to soluble reactive phosphate which is what the algae needs to uh, to basically thrive in your tank 
All right, and I'm gonna close it up with this, and I'm gonna have a second video. I'm gonna talk about, you know, uh, you know, bio pellets and a couple other topics. But the cool thing about bacteria is phosphates and nitrates cannot be skimmed off by your skimmer. Okay, what can be is the waste. You know, if you have food or detritus or what have you in your tank, the skimmer will skim that off. What it will also skim is bacteria. So as your bacteria consumes the phosphate, either form that I've been talking about, you need to export that bacteria that's consumed all that phosphate out of your system. And a skimmer can do that. And so basically running a skimmer, you know, when, when I started putting waste away, Dr. Tim's waste away in the tank, my skim mate turned really dark green. It was crazy smelly and my skim production increased, right? So I got to change my, I got to clean my skimmer cup and the neck probably every two to three days. Um, so that's the great thing about bacteria. Your skimmer can't skim off nat nitrates and phosphates in its form. What it does is it skims off the stuff that turns into nitrates and phosphates. So that's why your skimmer helps your tank. But it will also skim off the bacteria that is, that is basically consumed the phosphates and nitrates out of your tank. And then, you know, you're, that's how you export phosphates and, and nitrates out of your system, you know. Um, you know, I, I've been running GFO on this tank as well since I've started. So, you know, I, I mean, I do run GFO, I will continue to run GFO, but there is certain circumstances where, in my opinion, GFO can just get overrun with the amount of phosphates that are in your tank. So, all right, I'm, I'm coming up on 12 minutes. I'm kind of, I don't want to go too over, but so what I'm going to talk about next is, you know, I'm going to talk about, you know, as far as you know carbon dosing and bio pellets and what i'm using and i think there's a big difference in the various bio pellet reactors out there i have one on this tank it's been on for about two weeks i'll go over a detailed explanation of why i picked the one i had and then what you can get in trouble with with bio pellets okay and that'll be my next video oh by the way new camera guys I'm pretty stoked. This camera is like sweet. So the videos won't suck. They won't be my, you know, off my iPhone. Well, hopefully they won't suck. I mean, I'm still narrating them, so I'll let you guys be the judge. But uh, at any rate, the image quality should be much better. So, all right, that's it. I hope everyone has good holidays. Be safe. And uh, part two will be coming here shortly. Later.